Hello and welcome to the session in which we would look at the percentage of completion method or also known as contract accounting. Now most revenues is recognized at delivery. What does that mean? It means you walk into a store, you buy something, they deliver the product to you, you pay for it, that's what revenue is. Or a company deliver product to another company, basically inventory supplies and the revenue is recognized. Sometimes revenues can be recognized before the final delivery. What does that mean? It means before you de deliver all what you're supposed to deliver, a company can recognize, can record some of that revenue. This is where the percentage of completion method comes into place. It's when we can recognize that revenue before the final delivery. What could be some examples where you would use the percentage of completion method? Now, bear in mind, there are certain conditions to be able to use the percentage of completion method. We're going to talk about them on the next slide. But think about when a company is constructing a high-rise building, hotel, landmark. It may take several years or you're building a highway or you have a contract to build airplanes. When you have such project, the company might be able to recognize revenue before delivery. And there are two methods for contract accounting. One of them is percentage of completion, which is using the percentage of completion method or using the completed contract method. Well, in this session, we will focus on the percentage of completion method because once you understand the percentage of completion method, the completed contract method is very easy to understand. Now you need to know the rules. When do we use the percentage of completion method? Well, there are specific rules. First is you must be able to estimate the progress toward completion. So simply put, since you have a long-term project, you have a long-term contract, can you estimate how far you are into this project? How do you estimate? You need a measuring stick. You need some sort of a, of a measuring stick. That's what it is, a measuring stick. A measuring stick means can you measure your progress toward completion well most companies use what's called the cost cost to total cost so they would use they would estimate how much cost they will need to complete the project and as they incur cost they will use the cost as a measuring stick therefore you have to be able to reasonably estimate the cost of the project and so notice plus all so yes, you have to have to you have to be able to estimate cost and you have to have to meet other conditions. What are those three other conditions? One is you have to have an enforceable and a clear contract. Simply put, in the in the contract, rights and obligation are clearly spelled out including consideration. What are you going to be getting? What are your rights? What are your obligation in that contract? And obviously the contract cannot be easily cancelable. In other words, once you sign this contract, it's not easy to get out of it. That's why it's called enforceable. There's a stiff penalty if you do so. It's not worth it. Also, the buyer is expected to make payments to satisfy the obligation. So when you sell, when you started long-term construction, if the buyer, if you don't expect the buyer to be able to make payments, well, that's not really revenue. Therefore, you cannot use the percentage of completion method. So the buyer can satisfy the obligation. Well, also the seller is expected to complete their obligation to satisfy the obligation under the contract. So both the buyer and the seller can meet their obligation. When you can estimate cost and those three conditions exist, you can use the percentage of completion method, which is recognizing revenue before delivery. Now, when would you use the completed contract method? Well, if the project is a short-term project by its nature, it's not a contract, it's not long-term construction, you cannot use the percentage of completion. So it's less than a year. You cannot use percentage of completion. Or the contract failed the percentage of completion conditions, which is what? Any of these conditions, any of them, if you fail them, then you cannot use the percentage of completion method. It's as simple as that. Or sometime what's going to happen is this. The contract, you can meet all, all of those, but the contract has inherent risk beyond the normal reoccurring risk. For example, you could have a political risk. You might be faced with some natural disaster. You really cannot predict this, but it could happen. But what is a political risk? Think of uh, Iran and getting into a contract in 2015 with Airbus and Boeing to buy 100 airplanes for their national airline company. Well, they signed the contract. Maybe they can estimate, Boeing and Airbus, they can estimate the cost and everything. However, Iran is subject 
to economic sanctions. What does that mean? It means at some point, the U.S. administration might tell U.S. companies, you can no longer do business with Iran. And that's exactly what happened. Therefore, there is an inherent political risk in this contract. So what would Boeing have to do? They will have to wait. They will have to wait. They cannot recognize the revenue as a percentage of completion. And this is what we meant by there's an inherent political risk or some sort of a risk beyond the normal business risk. So that's beyond the normal business risk. Now, what is the measuring stick? It's very important to understand how to use the measuring stick. Again, the most common one is cost to total cost. I said the most common. I didn't say the only one. Any way you can measure your progress, for example, if you're building a highway, you can measure your progress. If you have a 100 miles highway, you know, you can measure your progress as you complete part of that highway. If you completed 20 of the 100 miles, you are 20 percent in. Therefore, you were able to complete, you were able to estimate your degree of completion as well as other measure, measurement method as well. So when we're using cost to total cost, the first thing you have to do, the first thing you have to do is you have to, to find the percentage completed to date. That's the first step. How do you find the percentage completed to date? Well, you will take your cost incurred to date. And I keep emphasizing the word to date and you're gonna see why. Divided by the most recent estimate of total cost. So you would look at how much cost you incurred up to this point in this project and what is the total cost, the most recent estimate. And the reason I say the most recent estimate, because your cost for the project could change. Don't worry, we will work an example. Then you will find your percentage complete. So you will first you find how much am I in? How, what my, what's my degree of percentage of completion? Step two, you will take this degree of percentage completed, which, which, which what you computed in step one in the first step and you multiply this by total revenue now you can multiply it by total revenue you can multiply it by gross profit for the project i'm going to use total revenue but bear in mind your textbook or your cpa review course or whatever you are using they could multiply it by gross profit and you're going to see what the gross profit is in a moment i will mention it then you know that you could use gross profit so every time the word revenue appears you could replace it with gross profit but i will use revenue because i want to give you the complete picture once you take the percentage of completed, the percentage completed in step one, multiplied by total revenue, you're going to come up to your revenue to be recognized to date. How much revenue you should recognize to date up to this point? Then step three, you will take your reg revenue recognized to date and you subtract any revenue recognized in prior periods. So if this is year one, the prior period will be zero to come up with your current period revenue. Current period revenue means what? How much revenue you can recognize today. So notice you have to complete step one. You have to take the information from step one to build your step two. Then from step two, you build step three from re revenue to be recognized to date. Well, that, that's a lot of lot of information. The best way to illustrate this is to look at a simple example first. And the reason I say simple example, because first to get to learn how to complete the co percentage of completion, start with a simple example. Although you may not think it's simple, but you're going to see, we're going to start with a simple example, then we'll work a few other examples where it's involving losses and changing, more changing an estimate. But before we look at the example for the percentage of completion, I would like to remind you whether you are an accounting student or a CPA candidate to take a look at my website, farhatlectures.com. I don't replace your CPA review course. If you are studying for your CPA, that's great. You can keep it. I don't replace your accounting course. My motto is saving accounting students and CPA candidate one at a time by providing resources, lectures, lessons, multiple choice, true, false exercises. This is a partial list of my accounting courses. My CPA review material is aligned with your Becker, Roger, Gleam, and Wiley. So it's very easy to go back and forth between my material and your CPA review course. I do give you access to 1,500 previously released AI CPA questions with detailed solution in their original format. If you're a CPA candidate, you don't want to miss those. You have, if you have not connected with me on LinkedIn, please do so. Take a look at my LinkedIn recommendation. Like this recording. Share it with other. Connect with me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and Reddit. So let's take a look at this example to illustrate the concept. Adam Construction Company has a contract to construct a $1 million highway at an estimated cost of $750,000. Well, that looks like a 
a, a really uh, not an expensive highway, but it doesn't matter. You can ignore the reality of it. The contract is to start March 20X1, year one, and the highway to be completed December X3. So it's going to take year one, year two, and year three, three years. So let's take a look at what we have at this point and start to analyze this contract. So the contract, they will pay us a million dollars for the whole contract. Our cost is estimated to be 750. So the first thing is we can estimate our cost. And we're going to assume this is what the government, and we're going to assume we have enough resources to complete this project. So simply put, the government will always pay. We have enough resources. We can estimate the cost. We can use the percentage of completion method. And as of right now, our estimated gross profit for this project is 250000 So make a note of this. So we estimate to make a profit from this project quarter of a million over a period of three years. Now, obviously, we're going to have other projects running at the same time. That's not the only project, but this is one of the projects we're going to be working with. Let's start to look at the data that we are giving. This is the data for X1, year one, year two, and year three. So first, I'm going to explain every piece of information on this slide because you don't want to start unless you understand what you are giving. Here's what you are giving. You are giving cost to date. For year one, you spent 250000 on cost, incurred cost. Then you are giving estimated cost to complete the project. Well, I incur 200000 My estimated cost is 550 to complete. So notice my total cost is I expected 750000 as of year one. In year one, I billed the government, the county, the state, $175,000. The government paid 140000 So this is what you are giving. In year two, cost to date is 500000 And this is cost to date. What does that mean? It means if I ask you how much cost you incurred in year two, well, you incurred in year two 300000 Huh? How? Well, cost to date is 500000 but you already incurred 200000 from the prior year. It means your cost in X2 is 300,000. Why am I mentioning this? Because in your course or on, or on the exam, on the CPA exam, you could be given cost to date or just cost. There's a difference between cost to date or just cost. Here I'm giving you cost to date. Therefore, you have to figure out how much cost you incurred in X2. Now in X2, here's what's going to happen. You went from 500,000 cost to date. Your estimated cost to complete the project is 300,000. Hold on a second. What happened to my cost? Now my total cost for the project is $800,000. Wow. Yes. Do you see what happened? My cost went up. Why? Could be many reasons. Could be my employee went on a strike. I had to hire employees and pay them higher rates. The material went up in cost. Something happened. My cost went up. It means now my gross profit, it's going to go down to 200000 And we're going to see how this works. Then I build the client, then I collected the cash. So this is the information that you are giving. So make sure you know what information you are giving first. Now, we're going to go ahead and first complete our degree of completion. Remember, the first step is you want to know, okay, I have my cost. Can I measure my degree of completion for every year? Let's start with year one. My year one, my contract price is a million. It, it doesn't change. Cost to date is five hundred thousand, uh, two hundred thousand. Estimated cost to complete the project is five fifty. My total cost is seven hundred and fifty. That's the most recent estimated total cost. And my pro gross profit right now is two hundred and fifty because my project will give me will earn me a million. The cost is seven fifty. My gross profit is two hundred and fifty. Now I need to compute my percentage of completion. This is what I'm trying to complete. Well. It's my cost to date. The formula is cost to date divided by the most estimated cost. So 200,000 divided by 750. In year one, I completed 26.67% of the project. Well, let's do year two and year three. In year two, my contract price doesn't change. Cost to date is 500,000. My estimated cost to complete the project is 300,000. My, my total cost went up to 800,000. Now my gross profit starting in year two, it's going to go down to 200,000 for the total project. Now I need to, I need to compute my degree of completion as of year two. Well, it's cost to date 500,000 divided by the total most recent estimated cost of 800,000. Therefore, my degree of completion is 62.5%. 
So 500,000 divided by 800,000. Year three, my contract price doesn't change. My cost to date is 800,000. That's it. I no longer have any cost to complete. I complete the project in year three. So cost to date divided by the uh, most recent estimated total cost, 800,000 divided by 800,000. I completed 100% of the project and my gross profit is at $200,000. Now we're going to take a look at my balance sheet entries. And I'm going to emphasize the word balance sheet because we're going to have balance sheet entries and income statement entries. This is the percentage of completion method. Okay. How do we record our entries on the balance sheet. Again, you're going to be introduced to new accounts, new concepts. So please pay attention to everything I'm going to be doing here because it's critical to your understanding the journal entries as well understanding the whole process of con construction contract. Okay. So in year one, I incurred 200,000 in cost. Here's what I'm going to do. For my cost incurred, I'm going to debit an account called construction and process. This is specifically an asset and specifically an inventory account. So CIP, this is a new account. You're not familiar with this yet. So CIP, construction and progress, construction and process, it doesn't matter. I will be abbreviating this as CIP going forward. So you, for your cost, you are going to debit an asset account called CIP and you will credit whatever you incurred, material, cash, payable, whatever you incurred. So notice all these accounts are balance sheet account, construction and process balance sheet, material, cash, payable balance sheet. I took care of this 200,000. I build the government 175,000. Well, when I build someone, I'm gonna debit account receivable. That's pretty straightforward. Usually when I build someone, I credit sales. Guess what? Under construction and process, you cannot credit sales. You are going to credit a new account called billing on construction, 175,000. Well, what type of account billing on construction? It's a contra CIP. So it's gonna be reducing this account, contra CIP. Why do I credit billing on construction and I don't credit sales? Well. Here's what's going to happen. When I spend the 200,000, I created an asset called CIP. So this is the asset. This is the asset. Then what I did is I built the client. I created another asset called account receivable. Hold on a second. So now just by spending 200,000, I have 375,000 in assets. Well, that cannot be the case because I only spend 200,000. How can I have assets worth of 375. So what I have is this. I have a 200,000 as a physical asset. This is a physical asset. This is what I spend. You know, if you look at the highway, you can see 200,000 worth of work. That's a physical asset. Then the account receivable is a financial asset. I cannot keep both. I cannot keep both on my books, the physical and the financial. So what I would do against account receivable, I will credit billing on construction and billing on construction would reduce my CIP. Okay, so this is why I use, I have to use a new account called Billing on Construction, which is a Contra CIP. Then the government paid me 140000 I debit cash, credit account receivable. So those are the balance sheet journal entries for year one. So uh, what I suggest you do is to pause for a second or a minute or whatever you need to and see if you can journalize the balance sheet entries for year two. Well, and by the way, as you are doing this, keep track using T accounts. So what you should do now, have a CIP, have a billing account, have an AR account, and keep track of your CIP billing and track and AR. You're going to see why. So make sure you keep track of your T accounts, especially the balance sheet account. Year two, what's going to happen is construction and process, it's going to be 300,000. Again, why 300,000? I mentioned it earlier. Your cost to date is 500,000, of which you already incurred 200,000. Therefore, CIP is debited 300,000. I credit material, cash, payable, whatever I incurred. Account receivable, I build 340,000. Debit account receivable, credit billing. We explain why you credit billing. And the government paid 300,000. I debit my cash, credit my account receivable. For year three, I incurred cost to date 800,000. It means I already incurred 800,000 to date. Previously, I recognized 500,000 of it. Therefore, what's left is 300,000. So in year three, I also incurred 300,000. 
debit debit CIP 300 again keep track of your CIP credit material cash payable 300,000 then I build the, the government 485,000 debit AR credit billing the government paid 560 debit cash credit accounts receivable so those are the journal entries that I that I perform on the balance sheet those are called balance sheet journal entries because because all the accounts that that are appearing all six accounts are balance sheet accounts it's very important to see how these balance sheet account appear on the balance sheet because we have some new accounts here's what's going to happen for year x1 you're going to have account receivable of 135,000, which is 175 minus 140. you're going to have cip 200,000. well actually you're going to have a different cip you will see why later but we can make the point here you're going to have cip 200,000. again the billing is a contra CIP, so CIP minus the billing will give us 25,000. So simply put, we have an asset called CIP and access of billing, a new account, which is CIP minus billing of, of minus billing will give us 25,000. And this is under current assets. This is what it, this is what it appears on the balance sheet. Year X2, please pay attention here. Your receivable will be 75,000, which is, you know, you started with 35, you build the client 340 minus 300,000. So basically you added 40,000 to your receivable. Your receivable should be 75,000 as of year two. Now pay attention to what happened in year two. Please look at this. Look, look at, see what happened here. As of year two, as of year two, if you look at your billing, at, at your total billing, and you compare your total billing to your total CIP, you have billings of 515,000 and you have CIP of 500,000. So what you did as of year two, you built the government more than the work you have completed so far. And this is, this could happen because you needed, you needed to, you wanted them to pay you. So you build them more. That's, that's normal because you wanted to, to buy material. So when your billing is more than your CIP, guess what's going to happen this asset will turn into a liability so notice in year one you had cip cip was greater than billing it's an asset in year two billing is greater than cip you have a current liability so in year two it turned into a liability of fifteen thousand, and that's why i told you to keep track of your cip and of your uh, billing but don't worry we're, we're going to see the full picture at the end so now what we're going to do, we're going to look at the income statement account. So you're already familiar with this. You're already familiar with the percentage of completion. Now we are going to work on the income statement account. Remember in the prior slide, we looked at the balance sheet account. Now we're going to look at the income statement journal entries. First thing we have to figure out is how much revenue and cost to recognize on the income statement. Okay, here's what's going to happen. For year X1, we're going to take our total revenue times the degree of completion, which is 26.67%. We can recognize revenue of the 1 million. We can recognize 266,667. That's rounded. The cost we incurred in year one is 200,000 minus 200,000. We have a gross profit of 66,667. This is to date. Everything here I'm computing is to date. Revenue to date, cost to date and gross profit to date then you're gonna deduct any record any revenue cost or profit recognized in previous years well this is year one we have nothing in prior years therefore we recognize in year one 266,667 in revenue 200,000 in cost and gross profit of 66,667 now we're gonna record the journal entries these are the income statement entries and we're gonna see a closing entry at the end these are the income statement entries. So here's what we do. For the revenue, we will credit 267,667 construction revenue, basically a revenue account that goes on the income statement. For the 200,000, we are going to debit construction expense. We spend 200,000 in expenses. And the difference between those is a profit, construction and process or CIP, 66,667. So there are two things that goes into your CIP account. Now they're going to add to your CIP, your cost plus your profit. Okay, so in, in your CIP for year one, 
it's going to be 200,000 from the prior slide and 66,667 from this slide. So the cost and the profit is put into CIP. Okay? Now, can you can you record the revenue for year 2? I'll give you a minute to see if you can do that. And I hope you did that correctly. In year 2, my total revenue is a million. I multiplied by the degree of completion of 62.5%. My total revenue is 625,000. That says my revenue to date. This column is to date. My cost to date is 500,000. My gross profit to date is 125,000. This is everything is to date. I'm going to take to date what I computed to date. Then I'm going to subtract anything that I recognize in the prior year. What did I recognize in the prior year? I recognize this much. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take 625 minus the revenue recognized in the prior year, 266,667. So my revenue to this year, 358,333. I'm going to take my cost to date, deduct any cost recognized in the prior year. My cost this year is 300,000. Now, 358,333 minus 300,000 will give me a profit of 58,333,000. ,33, I'm ready to journalize my entry. My revenue is 358,333, which is coming from my revenue from this column. The cost is 300,000, and I put my profit, 58,333, in my CIP, in my CIP account. Again, what I illustrated earlier, I showed you that billing was greater than CIP. Now, CIP reversed. But the point remain that if your CIP, if your billing is greater than you, your CIP, you have a liability. And that's why I did it earlier to show you that it's a liability if at any point in time your billing is greater than your CIP. OK, so I did this on purpose earlier so you can see the point. You can see the point. But year two, you also put the profit then it will reverse. OK, year three. The total revenue is a million. You have completed 100% of the project. Your revenue to date is a million. Your cost to date is 800,000. Your gross profit so far should be 200,000. We're going to take all previously recognized revenue, which is previously recognized revenue is 625,000, year one and year two. We're going to take all the previously recognized cost, half a million. We're going to take revenue to date minus any previously recorded, which is going to give us 375 cost to date minus previously recorded of ha half a million it's going to give us cost 300,000 revenue minus cost will give us profit of 75,000 for year three for year three we credit revenue 375 debit construction expense 300,000 and add the profit to our, to our CIP account of 75,000 so all in all now we recorded all the balance sheet account here's what's going to happen if you did what I asked you to do and you kept track of your CIP, you should have in CIP right now, let me just put it in another place here. You should have in CIP, if you kept track of everything, you should have in CIP a million dollar. And if you kept track, as I told you, for, of your billing account, you should have in your billing account a credit total of a million as well. Once the project is done, remember CIP and billing, billing is a contra CIP, guess what? The net effect is zero. So once the project is done, you would remove the project. You will debit billing for a million and you will credit CIP for a million to basically zeroed out both, both account. Even if you keep them, their net effect is zero. But the point I'm trying to show you is you build the client for the full amount for a million, your CIP is a million, then you cancel them and you finish the project you finish the project so i want to make sure you understand this step because if you can see the step then you understand the concept so there's a lot there's a lot and this is a simple example what could happen and and under the percentage of completion method is you could have where the project is originally profitable then it become un not profitable or it could be profitable in some years and unprofitable in the others Okay, now we kept this simple example. We kept simple. We did not change anything. We did not incur a loss. But bear in mind, you have to be able to work with examples where you could incur a loss in a particular year or you could incur a loss for the whole project. And we will work examples that deals with this. Even we can change this example a little bit to deal with it. But what should you do now? Go to farhatlectures.com, work MCQs, and look at other resources that's going to start to help you understand this concept. We're going to look at the completed contract method, how it works. We're going to look at 
the losses if you incur a loss in a particular year or if you incur loss for the whole project. There's a lot of practice questions about this topic on my website. Go ahead, subscribe, invest in yourself. Good luck, study hard, and of course, stay safe.